now. Is it still echoing really, really, really bad? Perfect. All right, so... Yep, there we go. And Matt Martin, I should have... Actually, I was going to message you to see what software you use because I knew this was probably going to be terrible starting out. All right, so apparently if you have the Streamlabs OBS, if you have your speakers enabled and your microphone, it loops through the software. Hmm. All right. So I am waiting for this image to show up, and it never did. Um, so I'm going to have to flip some other stuff around here. Do, 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 do. Let's maybe move you up here. So I'm looking at my software and it's showing my image on top, but in the actual live stream I am not seeing it. So we've got something else going on here. Come on. I had a feeling that I might have some technical issues, so I'm I ain't scared. We'll see how this goes. And if worse comes to worse, I'm just going to nuke this background image and pull it up that way. All right, so let's do this. Let's put that in the background, get rid of that. Now we'll see how this looks. Do, 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 do. Come on, come on, come on. So that sucks. My other image is not showing up. So there's definitely, I've got a good 30 to 45 second lag between what I'm doing and what I'm seeing on the actual live stream here. So I minimize this uh, Red's ballpark image. It still hasn't dropped down for what I'm seeing in the stream. That sucks. Think of this audio looping seems delayed as it comments on the field. Yeah, it's there's definitely some audio looping. I think I got that going. And however though, the so I got rid of the bulb all oh, I'm stupid. I know what it is. Let's do this. Bingo. There is a transition button. So I had to transition it. So now I can do this. I can re-enable that in the background. And I bet you you're going to see an actual image now. So I don't like that. So every time I flip up an image, I have to pull up the image. And I have to hit a transition button to actually send it from my edit side to the live side. So I have to do a double click. That's... That's slim. Okay, now I'm seeing it. There we go. All right, and looking at that, y'all definitely can't see the numbers on there, so let's make this a little bit bigger. I think there's a pill for that. All right, so now that I know what I need to do, so we're working on it. We're getting there. We're getting there. It's all good. It's all good. All right, so left side is 2018 results. Right side is this year's results. And since Matt is in here, he actually saw these results. Um, I think he saw both the front yard and the backyard. So <clears throat> this is what I'm looking at here. Um, kind of going down the list, we've got... Been gone for five minutes, had to play Pie Face Cannon. Kenny, you didn't miss nothing other than my technical difficulties. So you're right on time. Um... So kind of going down the list here, looking at the macronutrients, phosphorus compared to 2018 to 2020, I'm still in the optimum, even though last year I didn't apply any phosphorus. Um, there might have been, actually there was one app when I had a little bit of dollar spot, I applied some of that Scott's Max Green, and um, that had a little bit of phosphorus in I believe. So that was the only phosphorus application that was put down. Um, so phosphorus hasn't done anything, it hasn't changed, and it's still in the optimum level, so... 
I'm not going to apply any phosphorus. Um, J Farm, thank you. Yeah, I uh, I was dealing through some some issues, and I think I got that part straightened out. Um, now looking at the potassium, and I will have to kind of circle around this. There, I think there's some explanations behind what I'm seeing in my in my backyard. So the potassium is showing a little bit low. Back in 2018, it was really low. Um, so moving down to the the calcium and magnesium, calcium is optimum, but the magnesium is marked as very high. Now mix that with the low potassium, you actually can get a. I'll have to find there's a PDF report. Um, I'm kind of scared to try to pull up a PDF report now that I just now got this working. Um, maybe I'll give a link uh, later on in the description or something. But there was a PDF report where it said if you had high magnesium levels, uh, being that you have, say, uh, 350 parts per million or greater, and low potassium uh, being roughly 100 parts per million or lower, um, you can actually get a little bit of issues where the soil will get extremely tight. It will be hard. Um, and when it kind of dries out a little bit, it will uh, tend to crack, and you get kind of like a hard crust. Now, front yard, I don't see that as much because everything's fairly well established. Um, the backyard, though, I do see that, and I think that's predominantly because I've been fighting for the past year and a half or so after renovation to get everything to establish and grow in. Now, I have some spots in my yard that are um, not growing very well, even though it's been a good year, year and a half, things just haven't grown in. They seem to be, I would call it dwarfed, where the grass is only maybe an inch, inch and a half tall, and I really can't even get a mow in on that grass because everything else is, you know, three and a half, four inches, and then I have this little baby grass that just doesn't seem to be wanting to do anything. So it could be that that magnesium causing the, the soil to be fairly hard, and the grass just can't really do much with it. Um, now, the backyard, I had been spraying uh, citric acid, and uh, I had put sulfur down to try to help with some things, but that uh, it looks like I still got some work to do. Um, so I'll, we'll we'll see the uh, the backyard in a minute. Um, now looking at the micros, I was asked about my use of the TerraVita SP90 humic acid and the GS Plant Food Sea Kelp. Uh, I did a, a video I don't know almost two years ago when I first started doing the uh, humic acid. Just because, frankly, I was cheap and I didn't want to spend $100, $120 on the GCF products when I didn't know anything about them and whether or not they would work. Um, I was still fairly new to them, so wasn't sure if they actually worked or not. So I wanted to get something where I could you know, dip my toes into as far as the uh, humic acid to see whether or not it would actually do anything. Um, so the, the TerraVita is like 25 bucks. You can make four gallons out of it. And that's your, your concentrate, and then you take about an ounce per thousand of that. So it's fairly cheap, fairly reasonable if you, know, you just want to try humic acid, see how it works and how you can play around with it. Um, the GS Plant Foods is pretty pretty cheap too. Um, but I've been putting that down for the past two years. So comparing the micronutrients of the... You won't be able to see my mouse. I'm, I move my mouse around pointing at it, and you all can't see my mouse moving. Uh, looking at the, the manganese... And manganese hasn't fluctuated too much. Zinc has gone up quite a bit. Boron has gone up. Copper is all up. So looking at that, even the iron has gone up quite a bit. Um, so last year there was a couple applications of ferrous sulfate. So that might have helped that. But overall, my, my micros appear to have fluctuated and gone up. Um, so do I think that the TeraVita SP90 humic acid and the uh, sea kelp has helped? According to this, I, I think so. Um, I was I was saying that it seemed to be doing good for me, but without having actual numbers in front of me, I couldn't say one way or the other, right? So now let's see if I can flip over to the backyard. Boop, boop, transition. All right. So now, looking at the backyard... The <clears throat> numbers are almost the same, um, except for the fact that my magnesium has a little bit higher rates in, in the backyard. Um, my boron is a little bit higher uh, compared to the front yard. 
but overall the the pH and everything else is 7273 so it's still kind of alkaline and uh, the the low potassium even though potassium is a little bit higher in the backyard uh, still fairly low um, high magnesium low sulfur and uh, the uh, uh, micros are, are pretty good so with that my plan of me spraying ammonium sulfate and potassium nitrate this year it seems like that's still a pretty good uh, idea to do um, and I, I even verified that just uh, I always do my sanity check with my with my discord guys um, Matt and Ray they uh, they verified that it was it was so good to uh, roll with so what the uh, ammonium sulfate has the sulfur so I'll get my sulfur up I'll be able to raise my potassium and uh, avoid the the phosphorus altogether um, however I am going to have to change my rates uh, I have been applying only about uh, less than a quarter pound per month of the uh, ammonium sulfate and the potassium nitrate and then monthly doing some ferrous sulfate. Looking at this, I'm probably going to have to bump my rate up. Um, I know that you know, Fescue likes to have more like three and a half, four pounds a year of, of nitrogen. And the way I was going is probably going to be maybe about half that. So I'm going to have to bump my rates up. So I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to do that um, using only ammonium sulfate because I just can't dump that much ammonium sulfate into a four gallon sprayer is probably just going to clog it up uh, even doing the few pounds that I was doing as it is um, mixing that into the four gallons it was it was getting a little bit difficult to mix up so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes um, and if worst case and if I need to get the extra nitrogen and potassium down um, I, I might just go back over and throw down some uh, some 818 and uh, and see how that goes now <clears throat> One thing I, I hadn't paid attention to before, but the CEC, the cation exchange, backyard shows almost a 20. The front yard was like a 18. So it's respectable, but might be some organic matter that I need to throw down. Maybe get a little more compost or uh, Matt, let me know if uh, some soil might help with that. Um, but overall, I think that these numbers look good. Um, and maybe that might point me in the right direction with the backyard to uh, to try to loosen up that backyard a little bit more. Uh, just because I've got some spots that are just completely bare. Uh, looking at the chat here. George Papa, what's up? Not sure how often you're doing it, but you throw down more often. That might help. I'm actually doing... It. So I'm doing a quarter pound per month, and that's split up into two applications. So every two weeks, I was putting down uh, a tenth of a pound of both nitrogen and the uh, potassium. So unless I do it every week, but that gets to cut into a lot of, of family time when every weekend I'm having to go out and you know spray the yard. So <clears throat> unless I do something where, where it's a super chat, I am not at the thousand subscribers, so they can't send me money. I, I I can give you my PayPal address, just saying. But uh, <clears throat> so I, I I might do something where maybe I have to just do two applications on a weekend, you know, spray it down once and then go over it again. That way I can double up my rate. That way, we'll uh, I'll have to, I'll have to figure something out. Um, maybe uh, maybe even Matt or Ray will be able to give me some advice on to how I can do that with a four gallon sprayer and trying to get down. You know, roughly a, a half pound of nitrogen and, and uh, potassium um, per month. <clears throat> Look through the chat, see else I got on here. Everything else was talking about the echoing. Alright. So, all in all, I'm thinking this software isn't too bad. Now I am curious. Let me try. Now I, I want to play with y'all here for a minute. I want to see how this is going to work. So I'm curious if, so I'm flipping over to a screen that says starting soon again. 
Let me know if you all hear music coming through when I flip it over. So there should be roughly about a minute of this. I muted it that way I wasn't talking over the music and we're back so did you hear that this the music at all though that's kind of what I'm curious about yeah J farm so I I do split my spray um, I do two applications so every two weeks I go out and I spray the uh, the point one pounds and so I, I get a total of 0.2 pounds per moth. And music was on good. So it, it's it's weird because in, in my mixer, I, I could see that it was playing. And when I would hook up my headphones to it, it would either start to play. I would get maybe like a quarter of a second that would play. And then I could flip over to the, the live scene that you're seeing now and then flip back to the starting soon screen where I would supposedly cue it to start playing and then it might play for maybe three or four seconds and then it would stop and act like it was going and I could flip so I keep flipping back and forth and and it would just keep cutting out after so many seconds um, and it was real sporadic so I wasn't sure if it was cutting itself off or if it was actually working it's just something weird within the software on the playback of my in my headphones so it is good that at least that's working. So I kind of like that. So with the starting soon, it has a little bit of kind of hold music, you know, getting ready to, to start the stream. So that's kind of cool, I think. So I was... So I'll see if I can flip this over. So let me do this, hide this. Let me get rid of this. Minimize. And so I will uh, show you some of the work I've been doing in the backyard. Do, 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 this one. So I have been planting some, I was going to go with some emerald green arborvitaes and decided uh, while we were at the nursery to get some of these, these are actually uh, called gold strike arborvitaes. So some of these are supposed to be able to handle between the full sun, the full shade. Um, these taller guys are supposed to be able to handle the full sun a little bit more. Um, 
but there are some shorter ones that kind of go on in the back side of the yard. We'll flip over. So these are some of the taller guys that we planted. I'm trying to flip over to the other ones. So that's while I was planting them. Come on, where's the other ones? So these are the, the small guys all along the uh, the back side of the fence line. I had uh, <clears throat> got some of those, and those are supposed to be more of a partial shade. So that whole area, as you see in the background, there's a lot of oak trees, and they uh, get it's just mainly shade all day. So those guys are supposed to be more of a, a partial shade. And then I've got some more of the uh, taller guys um over here yeah this one and then another one over here those are again the, the taller guys and chad fleming's going on man so uh we're in the process of getting all these guys planted so the other ones that you saw plus these guys these two are done and we did i think maybe the first four of those small ones those are all planted so i've got four more those small guys were an absolute pain in the butt. They, uh, um, where they ended up getting planted, there were roots and rocks, and we thought those were going to be easy ones because they were smaller trees, right? I don't have to big, dig as big of a hole. Nah, nah, nah. Roots and rocks, and it was an absolute pain in the butt. Um, but I've got four more to go, and uh, we'll be able to him to dream of Groundhog Day. <laughs> but So I've got four more of these trees to go and, and I will be done. Um, but I think it'll look good. We, we really need some privacy across the uh, the back of the house. We'll spread, spread and block the back view. That is my intention. Um, did I transition? So I did not transition it. I forgot about that again. Okay. So y'all are going to see the uh, the live stream for a minute from what I see. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, picture inside of a picture inside of a picture. There we go. I'm going to have to remember to hit that transition button. Otherwise, y'all are going to see this quite a few more times. So, uh, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the, the privacy. It, so it's going to give the privacy along both sides. And they should get about four foot wide. So they're planted about uh, four feet on center from each other. So when each of them grow in two foot radius, they should kind of butt up against each other a little bit. Um, and then the, the height, they're going to be about 14 foot tall. So they should kind of cover things up quite a bit. Uh, as far as the back, now that's going to be the, the fun one because we've actually decided we're, we're probably just going to put a big privacy fence, like a, a white PVC privacy fence along the back. Um, there's, a, if you've seen any of my videos, there is, uh, a, a kid's play set. We're tearing that one down. We're going to get him a new one and yeah, call an IT guy, <laughs> uh, moving the play set over into the other corner near where those trees are. And I'm going to get a new shed and the shed is going to move down, uh, about, about 10 feet. And it's going to be a big 12 by 20 shed. And that's going to kind of block out. Uh, the rest of the view of the uh, of the back, so we'll be able to get some privacy. We've got a you know a, a above ground pool in the backyard, so we're kind of in the wide open right now, and not really crazy about that. You know, um, we could get one of those fences that go on the pool around it, and they're just they're not as good looking. So fear we get some some nice trees and provide some foliage around, and you know make it look nice. So we'll see how they go. And with the soil test, I'm, I'm hoping that these trees don't die. So we'll see because they were they were pretty pricey for. I mean, we got 16 of them. So uh, goodbye tax return. <laughs> Working healthcare IT and have been crazy busy. Had a bunch of for for was oh man, Chad, that sucks. <laughs> well, not called a she shed because most likely she won't be in it. Um, most likely it would just be a lot more overflow from the stuff in the garage. Uh, so all of my lawn care stuff that I have in there, I keep all my grass seeds, citric acid, some of the uh, um, grub X, 
uh, the gorilla cart, all that will get transitioned out to the uh, to the shed, my sprayer. Um, I've got a couple cabinets that actually have my lawn chemicals in it that I need to hang up. So I will be able to get uh, those in the shed and kind of hang them up so they'll be out away from the, the kids and things will look a little bit nicer. Turf therapy, what's going on? So I think it'd be nice. Um, it won't be a she shed though. I might call it a, uh, a hemian shed. I don't know. I'll work on a name for it. Yeah, Chad, I I feel for you. The uh, we didn't have too many furloughs with us. Uh, we have, I mean, there are groups that have to take a mandatory one day off per week, um, but they're allowed to use if they if they've been there for a long time, they can use their EIB. And if uh, uh, they don't have the EIB, they can take a vacation day. So they're just going to burn through their uh, their vacation time one day a week. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, our group and, and with network is already pretty short staffed. We're down two lead engineers and a uh, a solution leader, aka our, our direct boss. Um, they've been gone for one of them has been gone for almost a year. The other ones are coming up on a year, and we still haven't gotten any new hires. So the higher ups realize that, and they're not requiring us to take any furlough days. But that also means that we're probably not going to get any new hires in anytime soon. So that kind of sucks. But I don't have to take any days off. Beer fridge and AC in the shed. I thought about it. I thought about running electric out to it. Um, it would probably be easy because I could just dig a trench from the shed back to the pool where that electric is and probably just tie it into that because there's already a GFCI on that one. But... I'm cool. You're, that's cool with your company. Yeah, I mean, but if you look at it this way, if they did require us to take off, I mean, there's only like six or seven of us. So if we were going to be required all to take a day off, there would be one day a week where two people would be off. So we'd be down to like three or four people. So if stuff hit the fan, uh, it probably wouldn't go well. So as since you're uh, you're in healthcare and anyone else's healthcare. I don't know if you saw it or not, but McDonald's is doing a uh, thing from, <clears throat> I think from like yesterday until like May 5th or something. If you go to McDonald's, they do a uh, uh, first responder healthcare uh, thank you meal. My wife works in healthcare as well, so we went to McDonald's for lunch. You get like a, a double cheeseburger or um, some uh, uh, McNuggets or a, a filet fish, fries, and a drink, and they give it to you for free. So it's kind of a good deal. I think tomorrow Wendy's is doing some free chicken nuggets. So anyone that's in, you know, either first responder or in healthcare, you can get some free launch out of it. <laughs> Brandon Greer, holy cow! What is up, brother? Speaking of my uh, my job, he was one of my he's one of my former co-workers. Recently married as well, and. Uh, Played a joke on everyone for a while. He uh, changed his last name to uh, his wife's name, and he didn't realize he could only change his last name so many times in a time period on Facebook. And he got stuck with his wife's name on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, they would be dead in the water. Yep. And and the way things are going, my yard sucks. Well, watch more of my videos. I can help you out with that. Just saying. So, uh, yeah, they, they would be dead in the water. And right now we have some equipment that's, that's fairly old and needs upgraded. And uh, so we're kind of doing some impromptu changes, upgrading equipment and kind of improving uh, the be speeds. A lot of people are getting sent home, like thousands of people. So it's taking a, uh, a toll on the network. Um, so we're going through it and doing some upgrades pretty much on the fly to try to get things fixed up. Uh, so after we did that, some things have kind of settled out and things are kind of quiet right now. So we will, uh, we'll see how that goes. 
Yeah, no problem, Chad. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm not a McDonald's fan, but I ain't going to turn down free food. I mean, just saying. So what is everyone else up to? I, I did go over the, the soil test results. Who was asking that that said they missed it? Was that you, Chad? I gotta scroll back up here. You're deploying the Rubos, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I yeah, I did uh I did do the soil results. Um so overall, soil looks pretty good. Just high in magnesium. I need to bump up my uh, my rates for ammonium sulfate and potassium nitrate to bump up my potassium and sulfur. Other than that, everything looked pretty good. Recommendation for dandy killer. That would just be your good old three-way herbicide. So you can get something like uh, go to Lowe's if you want a Santa line, or you can order it online. It seems to be better because you don't have to wait in crazy lines. Just order online and pick up some uh, either Ortho We Be Gone. Um, there's some other brands that you know will do essentially the same thing, but you want something that has uh, 2,4-D dicamba and either something like uh, uh, quinclorac, sulfentrazone, triclopyr, something like that in it. But typically that will uh, they'll take care of your daily lines and depending on what's in there, you, you could probably knock out some clover too. Um, I had some spots of clover myself in the backyard, and I blanket sprayed the, how is it, K milligram ratio. We can pull that up. So I'll remember to transition. There we go. So let me scroll over here so I can pull up. So I have a hard time seeing the actual things within it. I need to be able to scroll in more. Hang on. Back here. Alright. So here's your K to milligram or K to, K to uh, why did I say milligram? Magnesium. Jeez. Getting tired. K to MG ratio 0 0.09. It's uh, not too hot. The uh, calcium to magnesium ratio, 3.98, so a little bit better. Is this hard to spread? 0.85 acres. I think so. Curious if I could pay someone to do it. I am lazy after all. The, you're talking about the, uh, the actual weed killer? That is typically a spray is what I would recommend doing. Um, you can get some granular weed killers, but I'm not too crazy about them. Um, typically, if you do something with a spray, JP led me to look in KMAG. Okay, all right, all right. Um, yeah, Brandon, you, you want something that's more of a spray because it'll, it'll get more of that. It's called a fol foliar absorption. So the leaf blades are going to absorb in that chemical and then be able to soak into the roots and kind of kill it that way. So it's a lot more effective that way. So definitely spray it. Um, depends on how much you got. Uh, if you have a pump sprayer, you can do that. If you just have little spots or if you're spraying, you said you have, what was that, 0.85 acres. So you've got quite a bit of land. So are you not uh, at your other house right now? I thought you were... That's right, you moved out, out near closer to me. So 0.85 acres. So if you're going to blanket spray, I would almost, geez, Kenny, you might even be able to chime in on this if you're still on here. Kenny Cooper, what do you use for spraying your two acres? I've only got 0 0.44, 0 0.46. I use a four-gallon four gallon, uh, battery-operated sprayer. Bought in Northern Kentucky. Okay, so a four-gallon battery-operated sprayer might be too small for 0.85 acres. So you might want something. If you have a riding mower, you might be able to use something like a uh, tow-behind sprayer. 
and uh, then you can load up the chemicals into it that way and then if you're going to blanket spray you could uh, just blanket spray just right in the tractor so you can get it doesn't get much lazier than that just be able to ride a tractor around and spray instead of walking so that'd be uh, that might be a pretty good option um, Kenny may be able to give you recommendations um, I think so you might want to check out his channel too Brandon he might be able to give you some good ideas uh, screaming at bees, yeah. Dandelion Geddon. Oh, no. Yeah, check out uh, Kenny Cooper's channel. And what I'm going to do... Let me see if I can do this real quick. I'm going to plug you, Kenny. I don't know how Matt does it so quick. He pops off these links so quick. There we go. So that is Kenny Cooper's channel, Brandon. Check him out. So he has quite a bit of lawn. Chad Flanning has 18,000 square foot. So yeah, he's uh, he's right up there with you, Brandon. I've got a uh, I've got 15,000. So Chad is looking at he's about about a half acre. So, Brandon, look into the North Star. Where was that at? Uh, yeah. North Star 21 gallon tow behind from Northern Tools. So, look into that one, Brandon. That may be a good option to look into. Clear that out. Petition. Uh, hell for review. Can you keep a bunch of competition? Oh, yeah, his, uh, his clickbait one. Yep, yep. I'll allow it. We still got six people watching. All right, so. If any of y'all have any other questions, hit me up. Otherwise, I think I might be might be done. I kind of went over I went over all the soil test results and played around with my my software. So I think I got everything tied down. It seems to work okay. I just got to remember to click the right buttons within the uh, within the software to make everything work right. I wish there was another way, so yeah, CEC seem pretty good. Um I know Ray was saying, you know, some people freak out when it's like under twenty or something, but it's like Yeah, you know, I'm I'm close to twenty. I I ain't too worried about it. Ray was like, I'm lucky if I can get mine over ten. So which he's got all that, that volcanic soil and everything out there, so that's definitely uh understandable. Um, but yeah, mine's, it's close to 20, so it's pretty good. I was looking at the, uh, the organic matter. It's like 4.5 in the front, like 5.4 in the back. Definitely got a little bit more back there because I did kind of top dress a little bit when I put seed down a couple years ago. So there is a little bit more organic material that was thrown down back there. So I could, I definitely see the, uh, increase of organic material. And I guess with that, the CEC would increase as well. So... Yeah, things look pretty good. I, I might try throwing down a little bit extra something. Um, I guess Matt isn't in the uh, stream anymore. I was asking him if uh, if how much the uh, Zoya would help me on that. Mine is 8.9 Super Sandy. Holy cow. Down to four. Yeah, so... I guess I am going to call the last stream. So thank you all for, uh, I guess, being my guinea pig. Um, but I did get to go over the uh, the soil test results. So that was it was a success, and everything seemed to be working right. So thank you all for watching, and uh, I will catch you all in the next one. <laughs>